All right, hello everyone. So we're gonna do some problems uh, involving the finite element method for this boundary value problem, okay? So what do we have? We have, um, we're over the domain zero one and U solves this boundary value problem. So specifically here, this is a fourth derivative of U minus the derivative of k times u derivative of u plus q times u is equal to f. We have that u of zero equals u of one is equal to zero. The second derivative at zero is equal to zero. And then we have this other uh, type of boundary value. Okay. And k is a non-negative uh, function. q is a non-negative function. Beta is a positive uh, real number and f and g are also some given values. So f is a function and gamma is some number we don't know. Okay. And so the first problem we're going to look at is here. So we're going to derive the weak formulation of this problem and then we'll also specify the appropriate Sobolev spaces that go along with it. So uh, in any of these kind of problems, when you want to find the weak formulation, uh, what you want to do is you'll multiply your uh, differential equation or your partial differential equation by some test function and you'll integrate over your space omega. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's write it out. Okay, so let's see. We're going to integrate we're going to multiply that whole differential equation by some function v. So I'm just going to write out all these terms. And v dx. And this is going to equal to the integral 0, 1 of f times v dx. All right. And really the strategy is we're just going to apply integration by parts uh, wherever we can. So this first term here, and we're only going to fo focus on the left-hand side. So the first term here, we can apply integration by parts. And doing so, we'll find uh, the third derivative of u times v evaluated at 1, uh, 0 to 1, and then minus the integral from 0 to 1 of u third derivative times v prime dx. For this next term, we'll also apply the integration by parts. So we're going to have minus uh, what k of x times u prime v from 0 to 1. And then we'll have plus the integral, Let's see if I can fit it here, of 0, 1, k of x, u prime, v prime. And then we still have this integral here, which I seem to have forgotten the u. There should be a u here, so u, v. Okay, so we still have this integral here. This is going to be plus the integral q of x, u, v, dx. All right, and now we want to apply any sort of boundary conditions we have. So the first thing we'll notice if we look back at the original problem, there is no information given about the third derivative. Okay, so since we don't have any information about the third derivative, we need to impose a condition on our test function v. Okay. So since here, um, again, we don't have information about u, the third derivative of u, so we're going to impose a condition on v, and that is we're going to have v of 1 be 0 and v of 0 be 0. Okay, so we're just going to set this whole term to be 0. Okay, and so if v of 1 is 0 and v of 0 is 0, then this term will also vanish as well. So that's going to go to zero. Okay, so 
If you notice, um, we have a third derivative here, so we'll apply integration by parts one more time on this term. And if we do that, we'll find uh, minus u prime prime v prime. This is evaluated from zero to one. And then plus the integral from zero to one of u prime prime v prime prime dx. And then we these other terms we're not going to change. So actually, let me mark this out. We're just going to have plus k of x u prime v prime and plus q of x u v dx. All right. So, uh, well, now if we look at this term here, we do have information about the second derivative. So if we look back at our original problem, the second derivative at zero is zero. So that term's gonna get eliminated. Uh, but here we have u double prime of one plus beta u prime of one is equal to gamma. So we're gonna actually impose that into our problem. Okay. So here we're gonna have, let's see, minus, uh, let's see, minus u prime, let me write it out, of one, v prime of one. And this is again the same integral. Okay. And let me get another piece of paper. So here, What do we have? So this condition will have, let's see, this will be gamma minus beta u prime of one times v prime of one, okay? So this is what we have here. And then again, the same integration term And, all right, so now we wanna look at what we have here. So if you notice, uh, if we multiply this out and distribute the terms, we'll have gamma times V prime and U prime times V prime. So the gamma times V prime does not involve our unknown solution U. So we can consider gamma times V prime as the data, okay? And the idea is we wanna put all of our data on the right-hand side of this equation. Uh, but u prime, we, uh, we don't know what u is, so we're gonna leave that as our unknown. So what we'll do is we'll write this, this whole equation as zero, one, our whole integral here, which I've repeated many times, but we'll write it one last time. Okay. And what else? So here, this is gonna be minus minus, so we're gonna have plus beta u prime of one, v prime of one, okay? And this is all gonna be equal to, we can move this up, this is the integral from zero to one, f times v dx, but now this uh, data we have, we're gonna add it to the other side of our equation. So we're gonna have plus gamma v prime of one, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this term here, this is gonna be f of v. And this whole equation here, we're gonna call this a of u v, okay? So this is going to be our weak formulation. Okay, so that is our weak formulation is going to be find u 
in some space V, we're going to be in some space V we haven't specified yet, such that A of U comma V is equal to capital F of V for all V in some capital V, so some space capital V, which we're going to specify. Okay, so this is our variational uh, formulation, or weak formulation, actually. Okay, so either weak or weak formulation or variational formulation, those are the, uh, have the same meaning. Okay, so for the, uh, finding the Sobolev spaces, so our V, remember we said that our test functions V belong to some space, uh, capital V. Okay, um, and in order to figure out what that capital V must be, we need to look at our variational equation and how we derived it. So if we look at our variational equation, we have uh, second derivatives, okay? So we have derivatives up to second order. And because of that, uh, what we're gonna need is our function should belong to the space h2, okay, the Sobolev space h2, because we're considering all of our derivatives in a weak sense. And I'm not going to go into all the details of the Sobolev spaces, uh, but what you can think of it as um, the functions are continuous, their first derivatives are continuous, and their second derivatives are piecewise continuous. So the second derivatives can have discontinuities. Um, but not only did we, not only are we taking v to second order derivatives, but we imposed the boundary condition when we were deriving our variational formulation. And that is we, we said that v should be 0 at 0 and 1. Okay, and because of that, we need to impose those boundary conditions as well. So we'll say this is h1, 0 intersected um, uh, h2 omega intersected with h10 omega. Another way you could write this is just to say all v in h2 omega such that v of 0 is equal to v of 1 is equal to 0. Okay, so it's going to be the same thing. Okay. And that's our problem. Uh, and what we'll do next is we'll look at proving coercivity of uh, our bilinear form, which was A, that function A we mentioned. And we'll also talk about the um, applying lax milgram so that we can guarantee a, a unique solution. Okay, existence of a solution and a unique solution. Okay, so that's all for now.